One of the things that we see distinctly in Scripture is that as Christians, we are called to live differently. Our faith should have an impact in how we interact with other people, the priorities we pursue in this life, the things that matter to us, the things that don't matter to us. We are clearly called throughout the pages of Scripture to live, think, and prioritize differently than the world. There are some clear metaphors that Jesus used during the Sermon on the Mount to talk about the distinction and difference that Christians should carry. First of all, he, he used this metaphor that we are the salt of the earth. And we all know how distinct salt is. You've uh, had a dish before and it lacked salt and, and it wasn't very tasty and you added salt and it was fantastic. It made a huge impact. Or perhaps you've had a dish that had way too much salt and you couldn't even finish it. It might have even made you feel ill. Salt has a significant impact. You can tell when it's there and you can tell when it's not. And, and so it is, has a very distinct taste. And he called us to be a light in the darkness. And I've, we've had several children's messages and other illustrations of this throughout the years here at Southminster. We realize that when you're in a dark room, it can be terrifying. And how reassuring it is to have a light to see in the darkness. And there's a clear contrast between light and dark, between salt and unsalty. And so uh, we see in these metaphors a personification of an expression throughout Scripture that we are called to be distinct. And maybe as a small group you want to brainstorm all the ways and how we're uh, supposed to be distinct through our our relationships, our priorities, our finances, uh, um, our temperament, everything. We're called to be distinct and different than the ways in which our sin nature and and the world operates. Well, as we get to Red Sea rule number two, trusting God no matter what, that is certainly a distinct aspect of our Christian life. Uh, For Christians, we're called to trust God no matter what. And that's a powerful statement. It's one thing to trust God, but it's another to say we trust God no matter what. We trust God when we don't know what's happening, when we don't know what God is doing, and when we're in a time of significant uncertainty. Uh, And that's really what that means. I mean, think about the things that our our sin nature or our flesh trusts in. We trust in what we see. Um, If you make an investment in a stock, in the stock market, when do you trust that it's going to pay off? Well, once you see the returns and you see it growing in wealth, um, our flesh wants to see results before we trust in anything. Well, in our Christian faith, as followers of Christ, we're called to trust God no matter what. Even when we're not seeing the results we expected or anticipated. So what does it mean for us as Christians to trust God no matter what? When we're not seeing things work out the way that we had hoped for. When we don't see any movement at all. I'm sure all of us have had some situation or scenario, some heartache or or hurt in our life where we were earnestly praying to God for resolution and, and development and, and some uh, some sort of healing in an area. We, we see the Apostle Paul do this in, in the New Testament where he says there's a, a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what this ailment was or what was uh, challenging him in this time, but he said three seasons I prayed the Lord would remove it. And what's important about that passage of Scripture as we recognize that when... Uh, Paul says, he says three times, it doesn't mean he prayed at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. When he says for three seasons, he earnestly prayed and pleaded with the Lord to remove this thorn from this flesh, this ailment, this cause of pain that he was facing. This Greek word seasons represents extended periods of time where he was fasting and praying and inviting other people to pray for him and asking for prayer and healing. And, and we read that it never went away. And, and instead, God taught him how to deal with this ailment and how to lean harder into God. And I'm sure most of us had had some search situation or circumstance in life where we were praying for resolution, like we talked about in worship. We want God to autocorrect our um, affliction to affluence. We want God to autocorrect our heartache to harmony. Uh, we want God just to fix things and, and we want God to move. And when, 
we ask God to move, we want to see results quickly. Like, like we want to see things start to get better. But what does it look like to trust God when we don't see an immediacy of healing or resolution or harmony in our heartache or affluence in our affliction when when we don't see it? And I'm sure most of us had had a have had a situation or circumstance in life where we have desired deeply, we have prayed earnestly, we have hoped diligently, we have sought the Lord to resolve or reconcile something that was going on and and perhaps we had a prescribed remedy in mind, a way in which we wanted it to be resolved. And maybe we didn't see God moving. Maybe we didn't see that situation or circumstance improve. Maybe it didn't turn out the way we desired. But perhaps, like me, you have some of those moments that you can look back on now. And with the blessing of hindsight and perspective, you recognize, recognize that that situation turned out exactly how it had to turn out that it worked out for the best, even though maybe you couldn't see it in the moment, maybe it wasn't exactly what you prayed for, but, but you see that now from a different perspective and with a little time, a little bit of hindsight, you can see that it truly was resolved. And so that's what we're talking about as we get to Red Sea rule number two, trust God no matter what. What does it mean for us to trust God when we don't see God at work. We don't see resolution. We don't see reconciliation. We don't see harmony coming from our heartache, affluence coming from our affliction. We don't see anything being resolved in the way we desired or any movement at all. What does it look like to trust God no matter what and how can we do it? That's what we're talking about this week as we explore Red Sea Rule number two.